Salutations, this is Grim Devel. Welcome back to our Let's Play of The Longing. Uh, time seems to go faster when you're living a comfortable life. Yeah, I guess so. Um, we've woken up to the sound of water. Oh, look at that. I just got an achievement unlocked, home improvement. It's nice that it let us mine out that last little bit before we ended the uh, episode there. Or, or before, you know, like during the idle time, it let us come back to mine that last bit to see this. Finally have my very own bathroom. Nice. Is this a disappointment? Granite. Looks like my... I uh, wish it was a disappointment, but yeah. Okay, cool. Lovely. That was very loud. Yeah, pick that up. So, we did it. We mined out the entire house. And you can see in the past uh, half hour of real time, uh, quite a bit of game time, um, mushrooms have regrown. Partially. Nothing harvestable, but there we have it. So what are we going to do this episode? Well, this episode we're going to want to end by heading to the Hall of Eternity. But uh, that's not what we're going to do. That's not what we're going to do. Um, I think... Um, we're going to do a little bit of a repeat of last episode. Because uh, we still need 10 wood. We need one more wood. So I think we're going to visit the mushroom area again. Uh, because last episode, you saw, we got a dream. We ate a bunch of mushrooms and received a dream. And it was wonderful. Um... And I want more. I want to eat more mushrooms. I want to plant and harvest more mushrooms. And I think that's that's what we're going to try to do. On our way there, we may stop by the mines. Um, I don't. There's not. I don't think there's going to be any wood there. But we've seen books respawn. Maybe wood will show up. I don't think so. But maybe. Um, I wish I could dig some wood from this bookshelf or this table. Um, so. I said last episode that I would think about watching the intro, and I did. I went on YouTube, found somebody's Let's Play that wasn't mine, and they did have the intro there intact. And, um, loud. And, uh, it, um, it actually looked familiar to me. I think maybe I had seen it when I bought the game. I think when I bought the game, I saw some... Um, commercial, some, some marketing video for it that showed that intro because all it was pure exposition. Like we on my channel, we saw a scroll down from the surface down into the caverns. Which, by the way, in those mines right below the surface, there are a couple of pieces of wood, but we would have to really get up there close to the surface to get those. Um, but then it goes further down, and the credits start rolling, and that's where we stopped it. And then after that, it shows the king um, in a profile holding the shade. Uh, not on my channel, but this is this is what the full intro shows. And I'll tell you what the king says because I wrote it down. He says, my powers have faded. All I have left is you, my faithful shade. All I ask of you is to wait and never leave, never to leave these caves. I shall now sleep for 400 days to to gather my remaining strength, wake me when the time has come to end all fear and longing. Haha. Huh. So, wake me when the time has come to end all fear and longing. So, I, I have a feeling that when this time runs out, the king will still be asleep. We will have to wake him. Which I think is probably another ending. I bet if you wake the king up immediately, the game, he just gets mad at you or something and the game ends. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I bet after, after this counter ends, maybe we still have time to do whatever we want before we wake the king up. I bet that's probably it. Um, but it's interesting that the king, so let's see. The king says my powers have faded and all I have left is you. So apparently we, the shade, were friends or a servant of the king before the sleep. We were called faithful by the king. 
Uh, all I ask of you is to wait and never leave these caves, which we haven't. I don't think. <laughs> I shall now sleep for 400 days to gather my remaining strength. Wake me when the time has come to end all fear and longing. That's interesting. Who's fear and longing? And, you know, longing is the name of the game. It's a pun because everything takes a long time. But also it seems also to mean yearning, right? I have a, a, a yen, a desire. Um, and what is that? What is that desire? The shade doesn't seem to really have a longing, right? He just wants to live his pitter-pat life in this cave and be left alone and read his books. I, it's, it's not really a longing. Be, wanting to be left into his introverted world is not really longing. Longing would be to leave the cave, and that doesn't seem to be his motivation. Um, whenever he leaves his little lair, he longs to be back there. So that's interesting. Um, whose fear and whose longing will the king end? How would he end it? Uh, we know that the king also has a vast treasure trove. And we do know that um, we we saw a dreamscape last time. And the dream was outside, above ground, by a well. Now, in the, in the intro of the game, when it starts panning down into the mines, the land above it, it's lush and green and colorful like the dreamscape we saw. But there was no well. It was different. It showed a little house or maybe an outhouse or something like that. Something, some structure, not a well. Uh, so it's, I don't know. My, my tendency is to think that that little boy in our dreamscape was our shade. But then how did, how did we become the shade? How did we become indebted or a, a servant to this king? The old man in our dreamscape, was that the king? It didn't really look like the king, but maybe maybe that was a long time ago. And both that man and us have changed over who knows how long, millennia? Maybe. Maybe the king has just grown um, callousy rock all over him over time and just expanded and we have just become a shadow of our former selves um, so maybe that same relationship we had we don't know that it was a father and son or father and grandfather it could still have been master servant so maybe we had that relationship above ground and now still have that relationship and maybe that relationship was never a positive one for us Maybe we should rebel against the king. We don't know. But we're going to see if we can piece together more uh, parts of this puzzle by trying to have more dreamscapes, trying to hallucinate more on mushrooms. So, last episode, I started talking about... Um, film by giving a little bit about my history of why I know um, maybe more than the average person about film. And uh, when I say no more, I mean, I've just watched a lot in my day, um, a more than healthy amount of, of film. Um, so I have opinions. I know, you know, uh, I, I, I have a fear. I have a personal fear of coming off as a really snobby, you know, oh, I'm a cinephile kind of guy. Um, I, I am. I really, I, but that's that's normal. Like it's normal for people to love movies. That's it's like saying I love music. Like of of course you do. Why why wouldn't you? Um, but um, and just because I'm the kind of guy that like pays attention to who directed or who wrote a movie doesn't mean I I have like a higher artistic appreciation for something than someone else. Um, and 
it also doesn't necessarily mean that I'm some bourgeois snob either. Uh, I might be. <laughs> I I I likely am, but um, I don't want to. I'm afraid of like, um, of that being a genuine part of who I am of be of being an actual snob and being like uh um oh you don't you don't know this you should know that you know like no it's it's fine it's fine that I I'm no no better or worse for paying attention to who a director is um and a lot of people know a lot more than I do also um I don't have Re like really special knowledge. I didn't take a film. I didn't take any film courses in, in school. Um, although those are mostly about filmmaking and not film appreciation. But um, we did have a cool film school at my college. But um, anyway, I'll just talk about movies I like. How about that? And directors I like and screenwriters and, and such. Um, boy. All right. You know, I, I'm going to start. And, and these, again... I keep giving all these caveats because I'm I'm afraid um, I'm going to I'm going to name people and be like, yeah, that's no one special. Like everyone knows who that is. Um, that That's OK. You know, uh, I uh, I'm going to start by saying I was in high school, I think early high school, maybe middle school when I first saw Barton Fink, um, which is a Coen Brothers movie, uh, Joel and Ethan Coen. And I think that was the first time that I realized um, how different movies could be. I was profoundly impacted by that movie. Uh, by the way, The Shade, I know I'm not going to where the mushrooms are now. I think this is where... I just wanted to go to the mines a bit. I'm not even sure if this is where the mines are. Is it where the mines are? We know where the mines are. Yeah, go that way. Oh, it's that way. You know what? What is over here? I don't remember. I don't remember, and now I'm curious. Um, like, I watched that movie. I'd never seen anything like it. You know, I just thought movies were like action movies or comedies or dramas, and um, and they all had the same sort of, like, plot arc um dramatic climax technical climax Daniel Mall, like it all followed the same story structure and this was the first okay i'm sure there was something here at some point let's stop by here um and i, I saw barton fink and i after the movie ended and the credits were rolling i just sat there and i just like literally like jawed agape i'd never seen anything like that and um, and that was the first time I was like, who, who made this movie? You know, I didn't know who directors were until then, other than, unless they were like Steven Spielberg or, um, Tim Burton, right? Like I knew who directed Batman and Beetlejuice because that's like, they put their names on their movies, like Tim Burton's Batman. But, um, uh, you know, that was the first time I was like, who made this movie? And I was like, okay, who are the Coen brothers? And then I... Um, and this was probably like 1995 or something like that. Um, oh, I missed it. I don't know. Somewhere around there. Maybe, maybe 96, possibly 97. Um, I want to say maybe. And so I started looking at other Coen Brothers movies and, yeah, and you know, at this point, of course, I've I've seen them all, uh, but I went on. That was the first like kick I went on, and I'm still huge fan, a huge fan of um of their movies. Um, they continue to make amazing films, um, profoundly impacting ones, uh, um, poignant films, um, with few misses. They had a period where they made a couple of films that were not good. But they, uh, with, and also the, um, the first movie they made with George, no, not the first movie they made with George Clooney. The movie they made with George Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones was bad. I can't remember the name of it. And then the remake of The Lady Killers was also not 
good. Um, they shouldn't do remakes. Well, they, I say that. They made a remake of True Grit that was good, but um, The Lady Killers was not. Uh, the original Lady Killers, awesome movie. Um, but after they did those bad movies, they started redeeming themselves. I think... I think the first movie they made after that was Burn After Reading, which was not their best, but it was good. And then, um, but then they started making, uh, they made um, uh, A Serious Man, which was fantastic. And and a few years ago, what's become one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies was um, Inside Lewin Davis, which uh, was really special to me. Um because as, as I've talked about on this channel, I'm a really big folk music fan, a really big fan of that era of folk when um, the music scene was changing. And, uh, and that's kind of what that movie is about. Um, and it was a very special subject to me by my, my favorite directors or a couple of my favorite directors. This is a lot further away than I thought. I thought I was going somewhere else. This is taking more time than I thought. I don't know if I want to be going here. All right. It was just the wrong way. I wanted to be eating mushrooms. Eh, I guess we'll make this episode more of half an hour than 20 minutes. Um, I just kind of wanted to look or just really double check the mines to look for wood slats. I don't think we're going to find any, but I just wanted to double check everything. Um, and... Um, but their early stuff, their early stuff was amazing. Um, Barton Fink and Miller's Crossing were both profound. Um, the Hudsucker Proxy was my favorite movie for a really long time. That was the first movie I ever bought with my own money. Um, I bought it new on VHS and I watched that movie every night. I had a lot of anxiety in high school, um, and I guess depression and, I used to, even as a little kid, I did. And when I was a little kid, I would, uh, and I would feel anxious um, or depressed. I would put on Lady and the Tramp, Disney's Lady and the Tramp. And because it made me feel good. It was a feel good movie. At, when, I, when I watched it, I just kind of felt better about the world. And when I was older and like in high school, I felt that same way about the Hudsucker Proxy. It, I, I loved it on, a, on an artistic level. But it also just made me feel great. And um, and I would watch it every night to make me feel better before I went to sleep. And uh, that movie is still really special to me. And it's hilarious. Um, Raising Arizona, amazing, hilarious Coen Brothers movie. And I've only, this is one director. These I'm just talking about the Coen Brothers because they were like the first ones that I really fell in love with and, and knew um, but there's so many other folks. Uh, my favorite movie, which I have already mentioned, I think I mentioned it last episode actually, but I didn't mention it as my favorite movie. My favorite movie is Terry Gilliam's Brazil, which is just a fantastic piece of cinema and ho darkly hilarious. Uh, if you've never seen Terry Gilliam's Brazil, I highly recommend it. It's a dark comedy. Um, it was made in the eighties set in, uh, this dystopian future. Um, but unlike a lot of dystopian movies, it's very funny. Um, and it's about bureaucracy and, and, uh, it was written by, um, Terry Gilliam, Charles McKeown and, uh, McCohen, McKeown, I never know how to pronounce it. And, uh, Tom Stoppard also co-wrote it, um, and you can tell some very like artistic things. There's like narratively artistic things in that movie. You know what? There was a piece of wood hanging in there. Hold on. Is there anything I can do about that? I think it's just a beam that like holds up the cave ceiling like in a real mine, but Yeah, I don't think there's anything I can do about this. We'll go back in the other cave, but then I think we'll go back to the mushrooms. Um, uh, so Brazil is, uh, it's amazing. It is dark, though. It's funny, but it, it is very dark. 
if you if you can't handle that um you know maybe don't watch it but uh it's it's amazing and that era of movies uh terry gilliam actually wrote he has three movies uh that he made consecutively that were all kind of thematically similar it's kind of a thematic trilogy even though they have nothing to do plot wise with one another um brazil was the second one the middle one the first one he made was time bandits which is also a hilarious but kind of dark movie okay nothing here just sulfur and all right to the mushrooms and uh and then the and that movie is about this little kid who is in his bedroom one night and these dwarves um suddenly like burst through his wall being chased by this giant godhead and they bring the boy with them and they end up uh traveling through time through all these different points in history stealing historical artifacts <laughs> and uh i mean that that plot sounds amazing right um it, it but it, it does get a little dark and it's it's amazing um and the third movie which was the first one I saw. I actually saw it when I was a little, when, when it first came out, my parents rented it and I was kind of a little kid. And um, I remember loving it when it first came out. But, you know, I didn't have the same kind of appreciation as when I was older. Uh, the one that he made after Brazil was The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, uh, which again, a fantastic movie. Um, amazing cast. Uh, they all have amazing casts. But um, all of these movies... Uh, were a thematic trilogy because they all kind of dealt with um, fantasy and 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 like fantasy as an escape from and escapism fantasy is an escape from reality um, among other things I'm sure people can talk about it more eloquently than I um, I've never like written a paper on it. I'm sure papers have been written on this trilogy um, but they're three of my favorite movies Brazil being um, just the most fantastic and uh, other Terry Gilliam movies, of course, uh, you know, Terry Gilliam directed, he was a member of Monty Python. He he was their director. He directed um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, so, uh, you know, if you if you don't know, don't know the other movies I'm talking about, you probably know that one. Uh, and then like his other early movies, um, The Fisher King, 12 Monkeys. And then, of course, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas was kind of when he hit his um, str- his like peak as which was a, an amazing film um one of my favorites and after that i don't know what happened he just like lost his touch he has not made a good film since fear and loathing in las vegas he used to be one of the best filmmakers in the world and then this happens i mean it also happened with you know francis ford coppola and it happens uh happened with george lucas right um people just I don't know. After Fear and Loathing, and Fear and Loathing did have some CGI in it, not a lot. Um, but after that movie, he kind of started embracing some of that. I think the movie he, I remember him making right after that, if 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 I'm correct in the chronology, was uh, Brothers Grimm, and it had all this terrible CGI in it, and it just really detracted from everything. Um, and he did kind of start stray away from that later i don't remember any cgi in the imaginarium of dr parnassus or in a zero theorem zero theorem wasn't bad but it was just him trying to make brazil again it just wasn't as good i don't know maybe i'm being too hard on him um but early you know terry gilliam from his early days up till fear and loathing fantastic so that's time. I've only talked about two directors and it's this episode has gone on a lot. So you could cinema is cinema is a big topic for me. Um, Cause there are, there are a lot of folks. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I guess I can only talk about the people that have impacted me the most and were always my like, go back to people. I think and I'm sure I'm going to forget stuff too. I like all kinds of film. Um, all kinds, except maybe like, you know, uh, Hallmark Channel 
um, you know, or lifetime movies. I don't like that. I don't like movies where like the only thing going for it is like dramatic music and that's supposed to carry the emotional weight of everything. Um, any, any, any genre, as long as it's well made. Um, yeah. And, and television, man, you have to talk, you can't talk about cinema without talking about television now. Cause they're just the same quality now. Um, and I, you know, I'm talking about, I keep talking about like movies that are really high quality and amazing, but it doesn't mean I don't also like, I've seen every Marvel movie, um, and I get excited about those. I, I've seen, you know, uh, I've seen, uh, and, and, and fully enjoy like Ernest Ghost Camp and stuff like that. I mean, you know, um, and just like dumb comedies. That's that's a part of my appreciation too. Uh, I don't watch a lot of stupid action movies. I don't like stupid action movies. I don't like bad horror movies. Um, and when I say bad horror movies, I, I just mean badly made horror movies, like stuff where they're just jump scare after jump scare. Um, it's very rare. I, I think horror is a genre that's very difficult to do well. But when you find a horror movie that's done well, they're amazing. Um, like some of my favorite movies are horror movies um, just because of they're done so well. Alien, um, Rosemary's Baby, uh, just, um, just like, you know, things that people had not done before that um, were super creative. I feel like the last horror movie I saw that was really even remotely original, and this, this isn't fair, because there are a lot of movies that I probably should have seen but haven't. Um, but the last movie I remember being original was Saw. And that was like, that was like 2004 or three or something like that. Um, and every sequel to that movie was terrible, just terrible. Um, but the first one was really good and a really great concept. Uh, there are other movies that I think are supposed to be good that I haven't seen. I never saw Cabin in the Woods. That was supposed to be really good. Um, but I watch horror movies sometimes. I I enjoy them. We're gonna we're gonna try to plant these where we can. If we can't find a place to plant them, we'll eat them. All right, right. We got to this next mushroom. Well, no, this mushroom is not fully grown. We'll keep going. And there's the green one we planted. We'll eat it if we can't find a place to plant it by the time we get to the next pickable mushroom. All right. We eat it. No hallucination. Harvest. Okay. The one we ate that hallucinated us, we did not, it did not glow. Why not plant this guy? Oh. Okay. Bro. I wonder if there's a if with the non glowy ones are just different, and I should have. Try to plant more of those. All right, this one doesn't glow, but let's see if we can plant it. Maybe you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's make sure we plant one of these. But I think the next non-glowy one we're gonna need to eat. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is glowing. Let's eat it. Oh, no, it was. It was glowing. I just couldn't even tell anymore. Oh, nice. Yeah, harvest it. I can't remember what I was talking about anymore. <laughs> yeah, glowing in the dark. Oh, I could glow, 
grow over here. Good. Oh, I just got a mushroom gardener achievement. That's cool. I feel like I'm doing something right. Uh, no, I do want to pick up. Nice. Let's do the same with the green. Actually, no, let's go to the left here first. Yeah, I'm totally blanking on whatever I was talking about before these mushrooms. What I was just talking about. And I think I think I was excitedly talking about it too. I'm just blanking. Oh, action movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And horror movies, that's right. Um Yeah. If you can recommend good, really good horror movies to me. I would be in your debt. Um, oh, interesting. Nothing's growing over here. Oh, okay, we got what a gre got a green one. Maybe I should bring a glowing one over here too. I mean, it's a little late. I think we've used all the glowing ones, but I should remember that. We'll need to plant this guy. Yeah. And then we'll go to the last mushroom area. I guess, I mean, we're up here. Maybe I should check out that area that we can't get to and maybe a giant mushroom has grown there. I feel like I don't care as much about the green mushrooms, but maybe I should. This episode's just uh, it's taking longer than I want. I guess it's okay. We want to, you know, any any time we can spend in this game where we're actually doing stuff and not just idling is probably good. And I hope you don't mind these slightly longer episodes. Hmm. Okay. I will pick you up. I don't know what you're doing here. I'll plant you wherever I can. Is this a green... Is this where the green mushrooms were? Or were they before the glowy purple ones? Huh. I do not recall. We can grow a mushroom here. Um. Okay. But this is near where we are stuck. So we're going to check that area out, see if anything's grown big there. And then we're going to end the episode by heading to the Hall of Eternity. Okay. There's a mushroom there. Yep, harvest. All right, it's glowing. We're going to bring it over here. I think we want more mushrooms over here. But nothing's... Don't eat it. Yeah. Let's get this one. I think I'm going to leave that one and hope it grows bigger. Okay. 
want to put it as far to the right as possible. All right. That's okay. I still can't get up here. No way to get up here. Okay. All right. So I am going to tell Shade to pitter-pat his way over to the Halls of Eternity. And I will see you next time. I enjoyed playing with you today. See you then. Bye, everyone.